oh, the weekend's almost here. And, uh, well, let's go in with the, let's uh, get on the line. Uh, Cronulla Sharks, would you call him a cult favourite? Uh, it's, it's He's getting to be uh, cult hero status. Cult hero status. I like it. Uh, that is Tom Hazelton. Welcome to the run home. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm going good, Tommy. How, now, I understand you're on the golf course today. Uh, I know you're a prolific soccer player and you're obviously a prolific rugby league player. How do you go with a stick in your hand? Yeah, not too bad. Played a, played a lot when I was a kid, but sort of as I got older and started playing a bit more footy, I, I um, sort of gave it up, but still still go right with the stick. What, what are you off? What's your handicap? No, no handicap, but oh, um, I was off, off seven. Nah, no, nah, I was off. Uh, I was off seven when I was when I was about thirteen. So seven, um, still strike, still strike them all right when when I get out on the course. But yeah, it's not very often these days. Why don't you have a handicap? You can be a rugby league player. You always get Wednesdays off. Yeah, just the body doesn't like it enough. Oh, Too sore, okay. scared, mate. Where, where did you as a kid? Yep. You were, did you grow up in Goulburn? Were you playing on that course down yep. there in Goulburn, near uh, not far from the police academy? Yeah, I grew up grew up in Goulburn, and Dad um, played every Sunday. So, as a young teen kid, just doing whatever your dad does, I was following him around the course every Sunday. And then went down there. There was like a little kids' coaching clinic that they do every Saturday morning. So I was down there as well before I played soccer. So, yeah, I was I was out on the course a bit as a youngster. Tommy, when you were a youngster, was the uh, the typhoon or the hurricane known as Todd Carney going through Goulburn? Did you ever see him around the traps? No, I never. I never did. I actually did a um, a fundraiser with Toddy and Jared Croker back in Goulburn last weekend. So um, he was he was back with a bit of a coaching clinic for the kids and a fundraiser night. So that that was really good. But yeah, I didn't see him much at all growing now, up. Actually, he's off the drink too. He's looking mm. good. He's looking fit. Hasn't had a drink in eight, yeah, he is. eighteen months. Yeah, looking really good. Yeah. So there might be there yeah. might be something in yeah. that. Yeah. Not drinking. Yeah. Mate. Oh. <laughs> Why bother? Really? Yeah. I don't know. Like. Yeah, I mean, it's good for Todd, but I don't know if I'm there yet. You're not in there. No. You're a mad cigar man. Uh, mm. Now, Tommy, <laughs> Tommy, how was the uh, how was the end of season review? Because you got the monkey mm. off your back. You you got that uh, that first semi final win. Then you came up against the Panthers, which I mean, the score probably didn't reflect how tight the game was because you blokes were, were in that game. What did Fitzy and the coaching staff um, talk to you guys about uh, at the end of the season? Yeah, the the Cowboys game was, you know, it was just good for the club. Obviously, you, you try not to read into the, you know, all the stuff in the media about the semi final win. But you know, coming off that loss in Melbourne, sort of washing that as quickly as we could and getting what we had to get out of it, and then focusing on on the Cowboys who are you know a good side. And um, yeah, I was just so happy for like Fitzy getting his first finals win as a coach, and a few of the staff sort of hadn't won one before and. And obviously the the boys as well, who would never want a semi that have been at the club for six or seven years. So, on a on a scale like that, it was it was good for everyone to get the win. And obviously you're never satisfied with anything other than winning the comp. But um, yeah, I thought like you said, we were, we were riding that game up until you know the 60 65th minute, and um, you know obviously got a few tries late late in that game. But obviously it's a step in the right direction, a few few steps closer than we were last year. So it's um, something to build off for next year. Mate, uh, Craig Fitzgibbon, what what is he like? In, like at a halftime uh, speech or that sort of stuff? Because Brian's no doubt got some stories about him in his playing days. Um, oh, as he's a, very measured, really. I don't know. We'll ask Tommy. Is he measured yeah. or does he blow up? Yeah, like no, he's yeah, he's measured. He's mm. very precise and detailed, and um, gets his point across. And you know, he's just such a good guy. So you obviously just want to go out and do your best for him every week because you know he treats you so well as a man before an athlete in a way, I guess. So you sort of don't want to let him down every, every week you run out. Uh, you you got to ask ask him about the 2001. We had a trip away. Ooh. We went up to the Gold Coast. <laughs> so we flew up with Anset. Hang, hang about, just just before we do this, and just note, Tom, you're, you're, uh, your contract, you're going into a position where you can negotiate as of November 1. Take yeah, some no. notes, mate. This might help. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You don't have, you don't have to blo- this is not a blackmail jobby. <laughs> no, no. It's, yeah. nah, it's not a blackmail jobby. This is um, – so – we flew up on an airline called Anset. You probably wouldn't have never heard of them because they they um they went folded. Ba- they went bankrupt. Mm. So we flew up on the Thursday. Yeah. They went ba- bankrupt Friday morning. Oh wow! So we had no way to yeah, get right. home, <laughs> and we've had a big week. We've had four days just on the pen and ink. 
Uh, <laughs> may or might someone may or may not have pooed in the elevator. I'm not telling. I'm not giving up anyone. <laughs> Certainly wasn't Fitzy. <laughs> so we the only way home. There was no. There's no flights. Mm. No flights. There was no Jetstar. They didn't exist. And Bonza. They, they're a while away. There was Qantas, yeah. but we couldn't get on. It was like. Well, yeah, they're picking up the slack from all two the... Two grand uh, a, a ticket. So we said, right, we'll drive home. So it was me, Craig Fitzgibbon, <laughs> Matt Singh, Craig Wing, and who else? Might have been Hodjo. No, it wasn't Hodjo. It was someone else. So well, we're driving. Is this Green? No, it wasn't. No, Granny, Granny was... Um, no, nah, Granny didn't come back with us. Granny went with, with another uh, convoy. But we're driving. So I'm in the front <laughs> seat, and I said, Gre- uh, Fitzy, I'm not driving. I can't drive. I'm not letting mm. Wingy drive. <laughs> Um, so and Singy wasn't Singy was too emotional to drive. So I sit in the front seat and I said, "Righto, Fitzy, let's go." So Fitzy's got sweat pouring off him. We've slept like four hours in four days. Yeah, and we're driving. I've sort of I've gone on the nod. Anyway, we're driving and Fitzy goes, "Ah!" I said, "What?" We were we're in the Gold Coast. We were further than Brisbane. We've been driving north for two and a half hours. <laughs> and, I, and Fitzy's going, Fitzy's going, mate, I've got no idea what I'm doing. And I turned to him, he was just sweat pissing off him. Oh. So we had to do a U. We, had, we did a U. And we drove to, um, where did we drive to? Oh, Coffs Harbour and spent the night there. We're going to do it the yeah. whole lot. That was probably smart. Coffs Harbour, that's a great place for rugby league players well, to stop Well, yes, probably, probably not. Probably not. But uh, you, can, you can ask him about that. But, okay, so you are off contract. Yeah, you are off contract in end of next year. Is that correct? Yeah. Is yeah. Uh, have you spoken to the club? Um, the Roosters are looking for a front rower after yesterday. Mm. <laughs> what What's your plans? No, I've uh, I've sort of like while we were playing and that just left it in the back pocket and um, left it sort of up to the manager and the club. But like as of today or the last couple of weeks, I haven't spoken to him actually. So um, we're due to catch up early next week. So I think we'll go over a few things there. But um, you know, all things being equal, I'm I'm happy at know at the moment and obviously I've I'd you know I've played my best footy there with my only NRL there and I'd love to stay there but um yeah hopefully we can work something out that um enables that. Would you be keen to go back home? Like would you would you be keen to go and play for Canberra? I mean they're the closest Ooh, thing to yeah. to Goulburn. Would you is that something or you rather you're settled in Sydney now? Yeah I'm I'm settled here. I like I like Sydney and uh, my partner loves it and loves the area too so um yeah, like all things being equal, like I said, that we'd be happy happy to stay here. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Mate, as a guy with a family full of Sharks fans, they're happy to hear that. Um, the other exciting thing <laughs> in the forward pack next uh, next year, Adam Fanua Blake coming to the yes. Shire. How, uh, how are you feeling about him coming and uh, what do you think you'd be able to pick up from uh, the great AFB? Yeah, obviously it's a, it's a big signing for us and he's been, been one of the best middles over the last few years and he's a... Um, you know, he'll be a yeah, a very welcome addition to our, our team and our pack and um yeah, even guys, you know, sorta of obviously losing Dale last year, um, was a you know, a big part of our forward pack missing and obviously guys like Royce and, and Jack Levin as well, it's you know, opened up a bit of a hole but um yeah, he's a he's a you know, top echelon front rower and um yeah, I'm excited to have him you know, on our team and not have to go up against him and tackle him next year. So that'll be good. And, you know, we still got guys like, um, you know, I think Braden Ueli when he's fit and on, he's, you know, one of the best front rowers in the game as mm. well. And oh, you've, lost, you've lost Royce, are, haven't you? Royce has gone yeah, to the Tigers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So like big Braden's obviously battled a few injuries over the last few years, but, um, you know, he's looking really good at the moment. And, um, yeah, like I said, a few years ago when he was, Fit, he was, you know, mixing it with the best of them. So hopefully we can get that version of him back. And um, yeah, it's an exciting year for us. Now, Tommy, there was a there was an article in the Daily Telegraph probably about two weeks ago about a, uh, a gentleman who had uh, contracted scurvy. Oh no! Well, so scurvy, it makes your skin real thin. You, mm-hmm. you just get a little scratch and your face falls off. Um, how is Cam McGuinness uh, recovering? <laughs> recovering from, from this scurvy? I've never seen. He's got paper skin. What what happens to his yeah. face? Please do tell. I've actually, that yeah, I've I've it's we'll be you know warming up for a game and we'll walk into the sheds before we've even kicked off and he's getting Vaseline and stitches and God knows what like it's, <laughs> it's like everyone else has just made a sandpaper and he's he's not so it's yeah it's I've never seen anything like it like it'll be week one of preseason and. We won't even be doing contact and we'll be bleeding somehow. So. <laughs> I don't, I don't le- know how it leprosy. happens or where, it, yeah. or where it comes from. But, yeah, he's, I've, I've never seen anything like it. But that's just 
just how who he is and how hard he goes. Yeah. He just does everything at 110, percent leaves nothing in the tank, and that obviously shows with how he plays the game as well. I I, I hear the way he trains is the way he plays. Like he's just yeah, putting his head where yeah, people won't put, their, put their feet. Um, can I do? Yeah. I want to. I, I like doing this with with uh, current players, asking them about the Penrith Panthers. Because yeah. I ask different, obviously different players who play different positions. Being in the front row, when you play against Penrith, it seems to me that their line speed, if you, as soon as you catch the ball, they're in your face. What What is it yeah. ab- about it? Are they sort of wrestling you to the ground so you, get, you can't get a quick play of the ball? Or are they just that fit that they can get back, get on side, and then just sprint up into your face? I think, it, I think it's a bit of both. Like They're obviously really detailed and technical with how they tackle and all those sorts of things, but like from you, you would have seen over the last four years, their line speed in minute one and minute 79, it's no different. Whereas I think a lot of other teams, they can start really fast. And then that obviously if you sort of go with them or match them in that degree, they can fall off. But it, with them, it's just relentless. And I seen the, the podcast the other day that um, I think it might've been their CEO saying that's how they recruit. Like they just recruit guys that are fit and, Obviously, it's been working for him, and um, you know, obviously being able to fly off the line in the last minute of the game is, you know, it's a good um, attribute to have. So I think it it works for him, and yeah, they're I've crossed the park. They're just fit, they're relentless, and um, yeah, like I said, they just don't stop or don't waver from what they're doing from the first minute of the game to the last. Is there much verbal in them? Is there much sledging going on? I know Jer- Jerome Luai has been known to, but mm. in the forward pack, are they are they India? No, not like no. I haven't really experienced any of it, but um, I've heard like obviously from a few people I speak to about the the middles there. They're real, you know, humble guys and mm. whatnot. But you know, if they're um, they've obviously got four rings in a row, so they've probably earned the right to talk a bit of. Snack if be. they want, but yeah, like I've I, only won I, one. Yeah, I I've only won one, and I hammer people. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, still. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. What What do you find worse as a forward? Would you prefer to go up against a guy who's all mouth and you know running at you, or is it scary to go up against the guy who's hard as nails and just says nothing? You kind of, you kind of need both because you can. If someone's giving you a bit of lip, it can fly you up a bit. But when you, when those guys that are good and they're quiet, it's like. Are they being quiet because they know they're better than this? Genuinely nice. So, um, yeah, sometimes I, I wouldn't mind actually copping a bit of copping a bit of stick, but yeah, I haven't I haven't come across much so far. Thank God, mate. How many tries have you scored now? Would you know? Uh, ten. Ten. That's a pretty good strike rate. Yeah. Out of how yeah. many games? Forty-three or forty-four. Oh, oh. This is these numbers. This is like Michael Bevan. This is like That's Michael Bevan playing that nineteen ninety-six against the West Indies. Your yeah. strike rate's very, very good for a front rower. Very good. <laughs> now you've got AFB coming yeah. who scores for fun as well. This is going to yeah, be a, right. this is going to be a potent uh, front row. Is it something that that they set up for you, or are you, have you always been a, a, a natural try scorer? No, like we, it's never something we talk about or set up for. It's just a lot of the time it's just. Blake or Nico doing their thing, and I'm just in the right spot at the right time. So, um, but yeah, as, as far as set, setting up or calling plays for it or anything like there hasn't been any of that. It's just sort of been yeah, right place, right time. I think for a lot of it, mate. You mentioned Nico there. Um, Daniel Atkinson did a great job standing in for Nico while he was injured during the year. How do you feel like uh, the Sharks are looking for depth across the uh, across the park next year? Do you feel like you're covered in most positions? A wing one, so he's just a guy that you can trust to put anywhere in your side and. Um, yeah, like you said, we have, you know, a lot of depth. There's, um, you know, a couple of guys that, at the back there, um, like Liam Ison debuted this year. Cade Dykes will be back in the mix next year if something happens there. And obviously in the forwards, um, we've lost a couple of guys. But, um, you know, Big Tooks, who played a couple of games for us this year, he's really starting to, to find his feet. And then we've got uh, guys like Jesse Colquhoun who, as well, who, although he's coming off that ACL, um, you know, we're not far off seeing the very best of him. So... Our depth is looking really good at the moment and um, hopefully we can get the results to, to go with it next year. Put my mic on. Tommy, just give the listeners a bit of an indication or an idea of what's coming up pre-season. Now, how long oh, yeah. have you had off so far? Uh, I think we've had four weeks so far, four or five weeks off. Right, and that you all come back at different stages. Yeah. When do you have to go back? 
are the sixth of December. Sixth of December. Oh. So they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna yep. flog you. And I know yeah. Fitz Fitzy was big yep. on training hard. What's the worst thing for in the off season, especially for a front rower? What's something that you're you're just going? Uh oh, I know this is coming. Um, apart from the the testing and stuff like that, um, probably the some of the wrestle sessions we do are pretty grim. Lots of, you know, <laughs> con and wrestling and agility and all that sort of stuff. And a big man like myself getting up off and down off the ground a heap of times in a almost sauna-like environment inside with 20 other dudes on mats you can't really fit on. Yeah. yeah. Are, you, a, are you clothed? Yeah, Can you play the music? Yeah. Are, you, are, you, are you clothed? Because this is sounding very like Ken's Karate Club on a Tuesday, which Fitzy and I have been um, there once. It was awesome. Yeah, That's another story. Partially clothed. Um, so, is, is there sand hills? Do you do on those sand hills? Because that was we used to hate those wander sand hills. Um, Are they gone now? Some sometimes we do, not not often, but um, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if they're they're whacked in there randomly at a couple of stages this year. Mate, how do you go? So you've got now. You've got. I'm looking, just trying to do the maths. You've got about five weeks before you're going to be back. How's the balance go between yeah. letting your hair down and go? This is my five weeks. I can really rip in, have a bit of fun, and then the realization that when you come back, you're straight into that sort of level of fitness training and that sort of stuff. Where do you find that balance? Are you letting yourself go part of the week, or are you just still trying to keep it all together? Yeah, I sort of have the first you know month first four weeks off to give the body a bit of a rest and then when you sort of have that month out the four or five weeks it's doing something most days through the week and still if something comes up on the weekend obviously not turning it down because it's one of the only times of the year that you can sort of do things or go to events or birthdays or whatever you have on but um, yeah I think it's sort of similar for most of the guys it's sort of through the through the week doing something to keep yourself busy or moving or a bit of cardio or whatever but at the same time you know, it's a pretty taxing year, so you do need to find the balance of not flogging yourself because if you've gone too hard before you go in, you can break down pretty early into the preseason, which isn't ideal either. So it's just about finding that mix. And for me, it's usually, yeah, the first half, not doing a great deal, and then sort of the next month leading in, getting back into shape as, as best I can. Well, Tom, mate, enjoy the next five weekends, mate, because oh, it yes. sounds like uh, they, they're your chance. <laughs> and uh, we'll look forward to uh, hearing and spreading rumours that you're training the house down yes, come pre-season, yeah. mate. And don't get too <laughs> don't get close because I hear it's quite contagious, the old scurvy. Yeah. So stay away from uh, Cam. <laughs> yeah. I'll be steering clear. I'll be steering clear. Off. All right, Tom, thanks for joining us <laughs> on, on, you, Tommy. on the run home. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.